Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the 14th uh, edition of Lumen International yeah. Conference, Rethinking Social Action, Core Values and Practice. I am so happy to see so many of you here in this first plenary session. I would like to announce from the beginning that this plenary session will be recorded for uh, further dissemination on Facebook and our uh, dissemination channels. Uh, we are very happy to hold this 14th Lumen International Scientific Conference, the 14th edition of Lumen Scientific Conference. Uh, on the program, you will see that it is in Yash, Romania this year. Uh, actually, we're everywhere right now, and this is, uh, this is wonderful. Uh, because uh, all of us here are the proof that we are not giving up. Last year's conference, for those of you who participated, and I know that many of you have, uh, was about friendship, about celebrating friendship. It was also held in Yash, only that we could see each other physically too and shake hands. Um, this year we will shake hands virtually. Um, Yes, we celebrated friendship last year and this year we are celebrating continuity because all of us here today means that we want to not give up uh, and not let this virus that is keeping us all at home right now uh, keep us away from each other and estrange us. So uh, why is continuity so important for us this year? because uh, this year is the 14th edition of Lumen Rethinking Social Action, Core Values in Practice International Scientific Conference, and Lumen is celebrating 19 years of existence. Next year, when we will uh, be 20 years old, we will have the 15th edition of this conference, and it was very important for us not to give up this year and to hold this uh, 14th edition with all of you present here today, and to welcome you here and I see a lot of friends and I am so happy to see everybody here. I believe we will have a great conference and we will be able to interact and uh, discuss as you have been uh, doing Bună for dimineața. the past, good morning, as you have been doing for the past 14 years uh, in this conference, which we built together, all of us here, by participating each year in this conference. This year, we have lined up for you um, an exquisite set of presentations for the plenary uh, sessions. We have participants from Papua New Guinea, Professor Eric Gilder, who we hope will be able to overcome his technical difficulties and join us today. Uh, from the United States of America, Dr. Barry Jackson, from uh, the Republic of Moldova, Professor Vyacheslav Manolaki, and from Romania, Professors Antonio Sandu, Diana Bulgaru Iliescu, Simona Damian, and Marius Dumitrescu. Also, we have participants from all over the world, from Iraq, Kurdistan, Serbia, Cyprus, Ukraine, Turkey, of course, I already said, Romania, Republic of Moldova, old friends, new friends, participants that have been with us for years and uh, new participants who have heard of uh, how beautiful women conferences are and wanted to join in this year. Um, I am uh, delighted to look over the program and see that um, the papers this year are um, from all the areas of uh, humanistic sciences, because to set as a goal to rethink the social action by uh, using the core values of the entire humanity, the, those values that we believe are common to all of us is a major task. And you can only do that by bringing together uh, the scientific community. The past couple of months, we realized that um, common values are very important. Are important in a personal level and are important in a more general, globalized level. Uh, 
here in, in this particular session today, we have participants from three countries. We sometimes say that the values in one country uh, are different from values from another country, or maybe that people place uh, different weights on the values that they uh, use in order to lead their lives. But in the past few months, we realized that actually we're not that different. We were speaking about the globalized society until now, mainly theoretical, and we only sense globalization when we um, enter the online media environment and we spoke from our friends or uh, other people from other countries. But right now, uh, the past couple of months, we realized that we actually all face the same problems and we all have the same values. To stick together, to be human, to support one another. We have all applauded doctors, we have all cried for patients, we have all donated, we have all made small gestures, um, posted, uh, a flower, uh, drawn on a mask or something. Um, we came together from all countries and we realized that we were all facing the same problem. And this is how the empathy level worldwide grew on, a, on an unprecedented level. After reaching this stage, um, we are now at a point where we need to conserve these values. We discovered that we are actually very similar. If we are from Europe or from Africa or from the United States or from Russia or from, I don't know, Indonesia or wherever, we all face the same fears and we all overcame them together. Nothing can be done solitary. Now more than ever, we need to rethink the way we perceive ourselves in society and therefore the way we perceive our personal role in society. Because society is made, is composed, comprised of each and every one of us. And uh, only together we can create new trends or maintain those we already have. So if we discovered some values that we want to keep, that have helped us go through these tough times in the past couple of months, then we need to act. What can us as a scientific community do? How can we act? Well, we are doing it already by being present in conferences. Then each of us are going to go, are going to, go to our students, uh, to our research community, to our friends, microgroups, uh, big groups of people on a small scale, on a grand scale, but we will go and disseminate what we are preaching here because we just realized that we're not only preaching when we're going to conferences. We're not having speeches ex cathedra that have absolutely no impact on society. And this is because we realized that lately the media has placed researchers and the academic community on a front page. Um, researchers are now called to explain. And I think this is very important for researchers to explain to people the things that they need explaining. And people need to learn about values. Part of society has lost their trends, has lost their, um, their guidance and are now looking for ways to integrate the new challenges that they deal with into their everyday life. Some values have been thoroughly attacked by the need to survive in the past couple of months. Everybody felt this need to survive. It was about basic instincts and how to satisfy those basic instincts without being unreasonable, egoistic, um, selfish, with uh, how to be away from 
the others and still be together. And each and every one of us had to face our inner fears. We overcame them by reporting ourselves to values. So those core values that we discovered inside of us and then by looking around us, we discovered that were shared by other people are going to help us move on and rebuild our lives from here. So this year's uh, insistence uh, and persistence of the Lumen team to bring you together in this conference was very important because now more than ever we need to talk about core values and the papers that have been submitted for this conference especially uh, the ones that have been submitted uh, before the registration deadline are profoundly marked by the coronavirus pandemic and um, have been adapted to this need that society has for researchers and the academic community to provide guidance. I strongly believe that um, if in the rest of our careers we perceived ourselves as people who uh, formed uh, generations of youngsters uh, who taught. Um, so we basically saw us forming young generations. Today, I believe that the academic community also needs to step up and uh, be a guidance force for older generations. It is evident that people over a certain age face even more difficulties today to adapt. Just think about the way they need to adapt to technology. Today, if you want to keep in touch with somebody, you need to have technological skills. Um, I see here people from Romania, from um, the Republic of Moldova. We are people from Turkey. We are people who are used to come in contact with another human being physically, to shake hands, to smile, to look into each other's eyes physically, to touch each other. Uh, but now we are placed in this position where we need to make the people realize that face-to-face -face contact is not everything that face-to-face -face contact can be replied to uh, can be uh, replicated with true human interference uh, and true feelings in an online environment this guiding need that we see in society today can only be overcome if the research community sticks together and if we move forward and go out there and talk to people. This is why it is so important that so many of us have come here today and uh, in online, but that means we're together. And I want to thank you for that. I want to thank the participants from uh, all the countries that are going to be present in this conference for the next two days, because they also wanted to prove that they are not giving up. Well, we can't say that it's business as usual, but we are not going to stop. And this is just the first step to reconnect physically. And I am very happy to be here with you. And I am sure that next year, we will be even happier to meet each other face to face. And I can't wait for that moment personally. Um, to go on speaking about values and guidance, some of us in the past couple of months have discovered that we need to be stable ourselves in order to stabilize the people who look up to us or who need our help. 
I strongly believe that at this point, the academic community needs to echo one voice. And this one voice needs to be for um, bettering ourselves as a human, as humanity, as a human race, for becoming more empathic and more stable in what we want to give to the other and what we want to obtain from the other. We realize that you cannot ask for something if you do not give something back. And if we want to have trust as a research community in the future, then we need to give something back now. What can we give back, Professor Sandu? Well, thank you. Thank you, Andra, for uh, this uh, wonderful uh, introduction to our, uh, to our conference. To, uh, it's uh, almost a lecture about uh, solidarity among researchers. Uh, so it's uh, very important, as you say, to be together in this uh, in this uh, meeting. Uh, sorry that uh, some uh, participants still have um, technical problems because uh, this uh, uh, this year happened something that we uh, work on. We work on sometimes the virtualization of the social spaces. This uh, conference is an uh, such example of the virtualization of the events uh, that we usually uh, doing face to face uh, in a meeting. Uh, we all meet together in uh, Yash or in Ergovish uh, or in Bucharest or somewhere else. But today we uh, we meet uh, all over the world. But uh, sometimes uh, uh, there uh, could be uh, missing uh, links and uh, miscommunication but because uh, such problem uh, intervene at uh, uh, this moment with uh, professor eric gilder uh, professor is uh, with us but cannot uh, uh, cannot connect uh, some uh, technical problems we hope uh, he will uh, made to connect until the end of this uh, of this session hello there hello hello eric good morning welcome to welcome to Lumen Conference. Uh, Eric, you can present your paper now. Oh, oh okay. Uh, I, I'll do my best. Hold on. Let me see. Oh, okay. I'm just going to let I had a PowerPoint to share. Let me. Let me yes, we hear you. Badly, okay. but we hear you. Well, I'm, okay, okay I'm, I'm coming back. Uh, okay, what I'm going to uh, talk about is I have a short version of what uh, I had said earlier, and it builds on the models that I had uh, sent in the, in the original presentation. So I call it, what I'm talking about now, I'm doing a shorter version. Uh, pandemic-related research modalities by the three models I sent you. And I used that Boulding's tie threat injury exchange social organizers model of 1970. And this is where he has, you can, people are motivated in society by threats, or they're motivated by exchange metaphor, or by in interpreting metaphor. And what I mean by threat is sort of like the, the bank robbers saying your money or your life, holding you up. The exchange model is like the, the shop or the, oh, the stock market where you're exchanging goods and services for money or other things of value. And the integration of motivation is like in a family or a religious order or, some, or utopian community. So Bolton puts us out in, the, in, the three, in a triangle of intersection and, and uh, says that this, these are the three social organizers he talked about. And my issues with relating to the pandemic is the notion of you have threat, and we can think about numerous literature exists now on this pandemic response, 
including epidemiological threats, economic threats, social cultural threats. The exchange metaphor in this modality, pandemic related literature focuses on trade offs of different policy responses. For instance, the economy versus the, the health of the people. Integration in the realm in culture, these are voices seeking to reduce the crisis to further individual psychic health and collective solidarity. And of course, my own model, Logos Ethos Pesos model, uh, has some uh, relevance. And so did the social roles models I, I have there in the, in the plan. So modalities of pandemic discourse analysis on the personal, functional, and social roles model I, that I put out. Uh, we have level one, ethos, ethos character, uh, as a result of the tension between logos and pathos, uh, and then ethos acting in the world. Uh, and then you have logic versus intuitive perceptions at the input, logical evaluations, and intuitive evaluations and outputs. Level two, you have superordinal, and this is Kelly and construct psychology language. You have superordinal construct and mediation between anxiety and certainty, with the core construct being on a threat level, comprehensive threat, or on a fear out input, which deals with incidentalism, and that would equal uh, a character attacks of hostility, guilt, aggressiveness, or courage, and or logos acts of analysis of events and a synthesis of new ideas. And then I had this OX3, O3X or the organon, from 2004, 2009. And in there, we can look, you know, any research we might want to do on the pandemic could be passed into these terms. Uh, we've already talked about logos, people, pathos. And on the second level, we have permeable, impermeable, psychological construing, which comes from Kelly. The third level, we have a connotation, denotation, language, which comes from Saussure. Fourth level, reasonable or rational dimensions of argument construction, Booth, Wayne Booth, Perlman, and Toulman. Fifth level, we have open deterministic uh, construing, or ways of all rosters as if, and this comes from philosopher Stephen Pepper, Lord Kelly, uh, Hans Bollinger, and so forth. Sixth level, organic mechanistic construing, that comes from Pepper and Kenneth Bowling. Seventh level, uh, construing a social context, uh, which is Kelly. Uh, output rhetorical process in situ, uh, vertical axis, you have adaptational versus subjugational, Kelly language, metaphor versus metonymy in language, and of birth, fidelity versus coherence of arguments, Walter Fisher, uh, materialism versus social constructive realities, Peter Berger, Thomas Seckman, et cetera, uh, formistic contextual abuse, Carl Pe uh, I mean, uh, Carl, uh, Hopper, I mean, Pepper, from me, Stephen Pepper, um, sixth level, concrete processes, primacy of the image, Raymond uh, Williams, Kenneth Bolding. And then finally, you have action across time, diagonal analysis, axis. You have uh, there, uh, Paul uh, uh, Polanyi uh, talks about tacit dimensions and time. Uh, Paul Stippendorf is a German scholar that deals with this too. Uh, outside the context, so you have uh, archaeology, genealogy of knowledge, and society for both. And then I looked at their cars, uh, we talked about uh, sin and redemption work in these groups. So the way I conclude it would be, uh, if, we, if one multiplies all the variables noted above, one ends up with a vast multiplicity of ways of apprehending the one reality of the common culture. Of course, varying the analytical orientations employed would change the exact number of results the conclusion should be obvious. It is multiple readings of the most unambiguously simple texts of the society's words, history, and life, and this will be inevitably result from one individual or corporate reasonings. In achieving my, uh, any communal ascent of political, social, cultural, or religious orthodoxy, either of left or right form, that requires a simplification and reduction of the human experience of the complex whole before us especially the stag purity of encoded doctrines within ideological structures is our highest goal. What we individually or socially identify as home truths, uh, what we entertain or not is a questioning of these truths, or finally exhaust self or others to, in the act opposite, opposite against the same, will either benefit or suffer from the inevitable 
human act of choosing our modes of transport uh, towards or away the reality that surrounds us. So thank you. Thank you, Professor Gilder. You have just listened to the lecture of Professor Eric Gilder. Um, affiliated to the Papua New Guinea University of Technology. Uh, Professor Gilder is from the United States of America with professional academic experience spanning over 35 years of teaching undergraduate and postgraduate programs at universities in the USA, Romania, Korea, and Liberia, as well as being a higher education specialist consultant for international organizations such as the Open Society Foundation and UNESCO, among others. In Romania, he is affiliated with the department um, with the Depart of, uh, Department of Anglo-American and German Studies and the UNESCO Chair in Quality Management of Higher Education and Lifelong Learning. So uh, I believe that at this point, any of you who would like to address Professor Gilder's questions about his presentation are welcome because we are uh, happy to have here someone who can actually share a lot of knowledge. Well, I thought I would be, I should be elegant and uh, leave the participants to ask questions. Uh, but um, I, I know I, I started early. Um, I have seen this uh, Professor Gilder's abstract uh, some time ago. And uh, of course, a lot of questions uh, popped into my head. Uh, now, after listening to the presentation, um, I would like to ask him a question. Um, your abstract is about communication and also about lifelong learning. Can we learn to actually connect and communicate if we don't have physical contact. In your professional experience, and you have a large experience, can social values actually be put into practice if people don't connect physically? Is, phys is this uh, living in an online environment, just a prolongation of our physical self. Therefore, we need to connect physically in order to be able to sustain our values in the online environment. Or can we create such values and put them into practice by communicating only online? And I am asking you this question because I know that you're also into philosophy, so. Um. Okay. Well, um, you know, this whole shutdown, uh, the worldwide shutdown we're doing, and, and this conference we're doing with this technology, uh, I think it's gonna be fascinating to study uh, because, and I'm sure of doing it, uh, because when other pandemics happened in the past, like the Spanish flu of 1918 or, or earlier, the Black Plague, you know, people were localized. There wasn't a global uh, communication infrastructure uh, there. Uh, now, in this case, we have uh, these technologies that we're using like today. And what that means is, is that uh, we can uh, transcend the boundaries. Now, Obviously, it isn't perfect. Uh, I'd much rather be there with you like I was before. And, and when we met for Goa's day, I, I, you know, that was more fun. Uh, you know, this is, is a little awkward, but I think people are beginning to learn to use it. Uh, for instance, many corporations are now going to change their mind about uh, people working from home. It used to be a struggle for people to work from home, but now many corporations will decide probably uh, it's a money saver if people work from home. Uh, Facebook just announced, uh, Mark Zuckerberg just announced that uh, he'll have half his Facebook employees working from home in the future. Uh, so it's going to be an interesting thing about the, the, you know, sometimes art, you know, art happens when people are put with 
some artificial constraints, and they have to be created within those constraints. Uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, the other day was Stephen Sondheim's uh, Broadway composer, his uh, uh, 90th birthday. They had planned, all the Broadway stars had planned to do a big show at, at Lincoln Center or some, something, but the uh, it, uh, pandemic didn't allow that. So what did they do? All these big main stars from Broadway did a montage of each individual singing a uh, Broadway show, uh, a tune of Stephen Bonheim's from home and, and putting it all together online. And I can send that link to you, but it's a fascinating uh, artistic production that was done precisely because uh, the pandemic demanded they work within that constraint. Is that Thank you very much me? for your, yes, yes. I, I listened to you very carefully. Thank you very much for your answer. Dr. Gilger, uh, I also have to tell the participants that if they have questions, now is the time because we have only two minutes left of our session. So uh, in two minutes, uh, we are going to get shut down by Zoom. So. Oh, yeah. 40 minutes. 40 minutes. Total. Yeah. Yes. Two minutes of accounting. Because my university is using Zoom now for instructional purposes. Yes, well, Zoom seems to be the best moderator right now. Uh, when we are together yeah. in a room, uh, we can still uh, go over the program and the delay for five minutes, 10 minutes. But when you're dealing with technology, technology doesn't know that people connect. So uh, we need right. to stop when Zoom says we will stop. Uh, at this point, I would like to see if somebody else has questions. I cannot see any new questions asked. So um, if there are no new questions, I would like to thank uh, uh, Professor Eric Gilder for being here with us today. And uh, I would like to thank all of you for participating in the first plenary session of the Luman International Scientific Conference, Rethinking Social Action for Values and Practice. And after this first plenary session ends, we will go to the next plenary session where you will have another wonderful presentation of uh, a wonderful researcher and a dear friend of ours, uh, Dr. Barry Jackson from the United States of America. Uh, thank you I remember again. Him. Yes, yes, you see, we've met. And now we remember each other. And um, this is why I told you in the beginning of the session that I am very excited to have all of you here because it's proof of continuity and that we are not giving up. Thank you again, Professor Eric Gilder, for being here with us. And of course, uh, we can't wait to see all of you in our next conference. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you.